this? Heritage Barbecue? Heritage Barbecue. In San Juan. We've heard great things. This is what we got. Brisket, pulled pork. Try to. Uh-huh. And then their potato salad and their brisket beans. Let's dig in. <laughs> you want to try first? Here, try their brisket first. Okay, I'm a brisket girl. I love some brisket. Oh my gosh. Look, watch this. Oh. That. Okay. Oh my gosh, I can't even scoop it up. It's like falling apart. Mm-hmm. Wow. 10, 10. <laughs> All right, we're now at the San Juan Capistrano Mission. Oh, show your shirt. Zach got a shirt at the barbecue. Which the barbecue place? Uh, yeah, it's is right, right there. there, across the street from the San Juan Capistrano Mission. It's this old English. It's an old English font. I thought it was so cool. And Zach at first was like, eh, I don't know, but then. They had one large left, they had so. One large left, so I was like, it was meant to be. Meant to be. But I think it's cute. Yeah, I think. And it's soft. What do you think of the barbecue? I thought it was one of the better that we've had. I do, it's top three or four. I still think the best barbecue we ever had was in South Carolina, Lewis Barbecue. Yeah. But this was probably right up there. Yes. It was good. 100%. But I just thought that shirt was so cute. I'm excited. Yeah. Anyway, so now we're gonna check out the mission. We'll show you guys. Oh wow, look at I've I've never been as like just a person. Like I've always done photo shoots here and it's absolutely beautiful. This is gorgeous. This bench. I think that'd be so pretty in like an entryway. Even like outside. And look at this stone. So pretty. I don't think this is the original church. I think it's over there, but it said it got um uh, destroyed by an earthquake. Oh, look at the irises. These are beautiful. Wow. These are gorgeous. You know what's so crazy is some of this furniture and stuff in here is stuff that I would want for my house. Really? Like, look at those plates. Those are so cute. You imagine sleeping on something like that? No. Wow. Look at the tile roof, so pretty. Okay, this is the most magical part of the mission. Look at this. It's incredible. I think I already said this, but it got destroyed by an earthquake. And then this is the remains. But it's, babe, go walk out there so you can see how big it is. Like, look at this. Wow. It's so pretty. You look so tiny. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing? People like laid these stones and these bricks and it just blows my mind. It's just so pretty that there's like no roof. It's stunning. Amazing for a photo shoot. If you're a photographer, it's worth it. You, the, the, you could rent it out. Mm -hmm. Well, you house. don't rent it. You have to pay a fee, but you can come shoot. But other people are here, like oh, yeah, other yeah. visitors. You don't get to reserve it. Yeah. yeah. But you can do a shoot. Yes, you can. If I can find a photo, I'll show you guys a photo of it, like a photo shoot that I've done here. <laughs> and put it on screen, but wow. Like, look at how amazing. We've actually gone to a few missions. Yeah. They're, just, yeah. To look at the history behind it is just very fascinating. It's so fascinating, but like it just blows my mind. The other thing that inspires me so much of old buildings, like you kind of look at it and think like, how could this inspire you? But for me, it's the textures, it's the different tones. Like think about painting your room or your dining room or your house. And you know, it has so much, if you look beyond like the actual building, you can pull out some inspiration from these, even like the archways and the textures and the detail of the columns and then the, the stone mixed with the metal and then just the, the, the color of the stones. 
it's just so beautiful. I'm assuming that's limestone, but wow. I just, uh, I could just stare at this stuff all day, which you kind of feel like, okay, I saw it, you know. And even the stone with the palm trees behind it, like seeing that mixture, oh, just beautiful. Look at how beautiful the little bells and the water fountain. And then the terracotta pots with like the succulents inside. How cute is that? Just so pretty. I love it. I love old buildings so much. They just make me so happy. All right, so one of you actually recommended over on Instagram that we check out this like little town circle. It's called Orange Circle. And I guess there's a ton of antique stores, food, this flower shop. Look at this, how cute is this? So we're gonna take you guys through and hopefully find some good stuff. This reminds me a lot of uh, Savannah. They'd have like the you little- know, Sorry, you know look at that Starbucks co coffee? I know. It's like an old little building. Yeah, this is gonna be really cute. All right, made it to our first antique store. So we're gonna take a look around. This one is jam-packed, full of lots of hardware. Wow, look at these. How cool. I wanna find a treasure to bring home from our little travel. Just something that sticks out. Obviously, I'm not going to force it, but if I can find something that is just really sweet from our travel, like an antique, I'm going to be really excited. This is a really good antique store so far. All right, we found an antique mall, which I love an antique mall because there's they're just really big and spacious and... Usually you can find lots of different variety of things. This is a wonderful antique mall. Ooh, look at that um, ceramic candle holder. That's pretty cool. I'll put the name of this one on the screen. It's huge. That's cool. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me, but I found some vintage art books. I do not need any more, but there's this Rembrandt one. It's $4. They have so, like these are good prices that I've seen at other antique stores. Oh, I don't need any more, but they're beautiful. All right, this is the antique mall that we just got out of highly recommend such good stuff you need a lot of time it is massive in there we're about to cross the street and go to that mall here but as you can see there's this one that we just went to we went to that one there's one across the street there's a lot if you're in orange county definitely come down here it's awesome all right this store is definitely one that has like a lot more curated items it's really really cute Ooh, this little spot's cute definitely more curated than some of the other ones but they're all absolutely worth going to especially since you're here and there's so many mm -hmm. oh look at this old uh punching bag that's cool that old punching bag. Okay, this has been my favorite store that we have found so far. It definitely has a lot of shabby chic, a lot of country, but it has some different vendors that have a lot of curated items, which I really, really like. So, this is a really, really good one to go to. I like, I, I think my biggest thing about these types of stores is the wood. I love finding old pieces like this, I think would be really pretty as like a bar cart. You could put all like your not so pretty liquors down there, your glassware, your, you know, have maybe a couple bottles of liquor and then your 
utensils in here. So pretty, 375. Love that. morning everyone okay I did not vlog as much as I had hoped that I would it just got kind of busy but today we're going home I'm actually getting ready we're gonna head out we're gonna go get that coffee I think I did vlog the coffee it's called the coffee shops called whip or work in progress such good coffee it's not very sweet so that's the only thing about that so if you like sweet coffee I don't know if you love it but if you're not a sweet coffee person it's really good but I'm just gonna do my makeup and I thought it's been a while since I've done a little get ready with me so I thought I would do the get ready with me with you guys this morning I just put my hair in French braids because it's dirty and I thought I may as well just wait until I get home tonight and wash it and use all of the stuff that I have at home. I also need to do my nails. My nails are not done. It's driving me crazy. I don't know what it is. Like they're super strong, but they feel like really thin, probably because I've worn dip for so long. I can't wait to get home and get some nails on here. Anyway, so the foundation that I use is the Revlon Color Stay Combination to Oily Skin. This is the finish that you want. I feel like no matter what your skin type is, a makeup artist told me that, and it's the best found. I've been wearing this for over 10 years. I love this foundation. I have a backup in here, and I am in the color 220 or 240. Let's see, what am I, 220. So I go between 220 and 240, um, just kind of depending on the time of year. Yesterday we went to the Angels game. They played versus the uh, Oakland A's and the Angels won, so that was cool. That was a lot of fun. We love going to baseball games. They're just like so much fun and it's our goal. <laughs> we have a long way to go, but it is our goal to go to every ballpark in the US. So we're on three. <laughs> we have a long, long way to go. So I don't always do a lot of like makeup get ready with me's because I don't know, I don't have like the best techniques. I, you know, I'm not a makeup artist. This is just what I do. So I'm gonna wipe my eyelids off just so they're not oily. I always do this. Anyway, I just use the Real Techniques Beauty Blender. I'll have everything linked down below, all the makeup that I use and all the, you know, shades and colors and all of it it'll be linked down below this foundation is really nice because the coverage is very buildable i mean you could get very full coverage i feel like with this foundation and take it down my neck behind my ears i go all the way down my neck i even go like on the back of my neck because i hate when the makeup just like stops so i mean i go all out i'm wearing a t-shirt today so you know, just as long as it's covered. And then I will set it with powder on my neck as well. Next, I'm going to, let's see, what else did we do while we were here? We mostly, so we stayed in San Juan Capistrano. We stayed at Inn at the Mission, which has been a really nice hotel. As far as like the Instagram aesthetics, it, you're not gonna get like the, I think it's called like in LA, I think it's called like Hotel One. It's not that, it's very much like you know, old world Spanish inspired, but the service, everything here has been incredible. It's been a really nice hotel. And also what we really have enjoyed the most about it is it's right next to the San Juan Capistrano mission. So there's all sorts of restaurants down there. We ate at the barbecue, which was amazing. We ate at Bueno Bueno, really good. Let's see, where else did we go? We went to Ellie's, uh, Ellie's house, I think it's called. It's a breakfast, like a brunch spot. And then, I mean, we've, we ate a lot down here. And it's nice because it was all walking distance. My concealer is the Born This Way concealer and I use the color Almond. So I actually let that kind of dry a little bit and then I'm taking the NARS Cream Powder in Laguna O2 their bronzing cream and I just flip over my beauty blender sponge and then I just go kind of like spread this 
around and then once you blend it in it's you know obviously a lot better but just to kind of bronze and give my face a little more dimension. I don't do these a ton because I don't change up my makeup routine. I have been wearing pretty much, I, I might change the bronzing powder or the blush that I'm using, but for the most part, a lot of these products I've been using for years. I mean, years. So I always feel like, oh, they've already seen this, but you know, those of you who haven't or are newer to the channel, you might not have seen my makeup routine. Once I kinda, I kinda just focus on my forehead and my cheeks and then sometimes I'll take it on the like sides of my nose. I'm kind of sloppy with doing my makeup. Uh, then I will go in and start blending in my concealer. And as I'm blending it in right here, I won't completely blend it. I'll go down here because I do get breakouts kind of down in this area. So I'll just take whatever's left over of the concealer and kind of drag it down here just for a little bit more coverage. And then I'll take my blend my sponge flip it over where the bronzer was and kind of go in areas that i want bronze flipping back over to kind of spread this here so another spot if you are in like the laguna san juan capistrano kind of that area or in orange california we went to a place called the orange circle which one of you recommended to me on Instagram, that has the best setup for antique shopping. Now, the antique shops are not very curated. They're like your typical antique shops, except for one. One was called Country Roads. That was the most curated antique shop down there, which I loved. But it has the best setup because there's probably 10 antique shops just right down in antique malls. Like they were huge downstairs, upstairs, tons of vendors. All right there but there was also restaurants and coffee shops and it was really really like a good setup for antique shopping so if you're in the area or you're visiting the area highly recommend I gotta get a little closer to make sure I'm getting all my creases filled in <laughs> okay so once I get that like pretty blended in and then I also really make sure I get it in my hairlines um, I'm blonde so you can really see my makeup sometimes so you can like see it right there so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set underneath my eyes and I just take, okay, so they actually, I think they discontinued this. I looked everywhere for it. It's the e.l.f. powder in light pink. I'm like, why did you discontinue this? I loved it. So I got the Ben Nye pretty pink translucent powder. It's in, it's pink. So I just kind of dump it in here because I like having the lid to be able to, you know, kind of blend it on my brush before I put it on my face. And I just set very lightly. I'm not a big baker under my eyes. So I just kind of set in on my eyelids and in my, like right here. I told you guys, I am not very professional when it comes to my makeup. I just like do the same thing. Like I said, I've been doing it for years. Same, same old thing. Same lipstick, same all of it. Like sometimes I'll branch out into like a new blush or lipstick or whatever, but I always tend to go back to the same stuff. Are you guys the same way? Do you, are you one who likes to experiment or do you like go back to your same makeup? Let me know. Okay. So then I'm going to take like this tapered brush right here and my Charlotte Tilbury, the airbrush flawless finish powder. I just bought a new one of these in the Sephora sale, but I'm using this one up until it is done. And then I just kind of set down here a little bit, you know, so this makeup isn't moving around, especially because we are getting on a plane, even though it's a short flight, I feel like my makeup looks yikes whenever we fly. Then I take a my bronzer brush and then I add more of the airbrush finish. And I get this in number two, so medium two. I feel like it's pretty light, but I, I don't use it for like highlighting or setting under my eyes or anything. It's like a powder that I use for like my neck and stuff. So I really go all the way down my neck. It has made a big difference <laughs> with my makeup. Seems silly, but it really has made a big difference. Oh, and then when I started, I used this as my moisturizer. It's the Hawaiian Tropics Weightless Hydration for your face. And then under my eyes, I used the Tula Rose Glow. I just kind of like that this makes them under my eyes super hydrated. 
So I use that. And then for blush, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury in the color Ecstasy. And like I said, I just kind of throw it on there. I am not very thorough with my makeup. But you know, when you have a routine, it just gets like easy too. And then I've been doing, okay, so this has been going around on TikTok where you kind of like drag your blush onto your eyelids. I guess it's like a technique they did back in the 80s. So I kind of play with that sometimes. And then I like a lot of blush and the blush is like the first thing to go. So in the morning I am bright with blush. And then I also go right here, especially right now because I'm sunburnt right here. So let's just make it look like more than just my hairline got sunburned. I'm gonna take a second blush. This so one's just a little bit brighter. This is in the Jouet, I don't know what color this is, Rose rose Petal. My other one broke out of here, but I still keep it. And this one's just like a little bit brighter. So I, I like to add this one too, especially in the summer. So now that I'm looking really pink and blushed, I'm gonna add my bronzer. I use the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and I don't know what color I think it's like medium it's scratched off because I just buy like rebuy the refills and it is scratched off so what I do is I take that big fluffy brush again and kind of just pack it on there and then I just go right where I put that cream blush and just kind of set the cream blush and then I kind of do under there just you know to give me some, I don't have like the most prominent jawline, so you gotta do what you gotta do, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I go right here to kinda contour. I don't use, I know like contour is a little bit more of a gray tone. I just use what I have and call it a day, like it's good enough for me. Hopefully I'm not looking crazy out there, but you know. And then one thing that I have done for years, which I think really is key, is I take a my powder again and I just kind of lightly brush it and then I go all over my face and just kind of blend. It doesn't move any of the product, but I feel like it just gives it like such a flawless finish. Now, I don't wear hard, like any eyeshadow really. I take my powder, you know, set so I don't have any creasing or anything from the concealer. I'm just not like a big eyeliner or I'm uh, sorry uh, eyeshadow person I have hooded eyes too so I think that's like another reason so then I go in with the naked basics 2. this is all pretty much matte brown as you can see this one's done so I'm taking the color primal I have a little pointed brush like this and I just drag this underneath my eyes again i just have been doing this same makeup technique for years and i like kind of drag it across the top so it's like a messy eyeliner look basically then i go back into that same primal color and then what i do is i make sure that my eyes aren't lifted that i'm not tugging or pulling i basically let my eyes droop so that i can draw like my eyeliner so if it's sagging a little bit you want the sag down <laughs> because it's going to, you know, when you're naturally like standing there, you don't want to have it lifted because then it's just going to drop even more. You know what I mean? So that's going to be at its lowest point. And then I just do like a little eyeshadow eyeliner and I will thicken it up right at the base where my lashes are. Nothing too major. I kind of like it. A little understated i feel like i do wear a lot of makeup but like also not at the same time it's like a lot of makeup but not okay and then i just flip it over and the little spoolie kind of brush through this just getting rid of any like makeup that might have gotten inside my eyebrows and brushing through those i definitely need to go home and grow my eyebrows that's for sure for brows I am using, I use two products. So I use, they're both NYX. This is the Micro Brow Pencil. I like this one because it's like a small little point. And then I use the Brow Mascara. This just helps give it, a, it's a tinted brow mascara. This is in the color Blonde. And then the Brow Pencil's in the color Taupe. 
So I like the brow mascara just because it like makes them a little more fluffy and youthful. So I do like to add that in there. And I basically just trace my natural eyebrow line. And I'm not like that precise about it. Like I said, I just kind of go off of how they look naturally. And then I kind of thicken up. So right here where the line is, that's where I kind of like focus my pencil because I can always spread it with the spoolie. And then I'm a little bit, like I'll slow down at the end right there. And then that's it. So I like it to not only ombre like lighter to darker, but ombre like darker at the bottom, like this whole line right here to lighter going up at the top. So this is what they're gonna look like before I start spreading it. So then I take the spoolie and I lift going up. So I thin that out a little bit, but it also drags some of that product up towards the top, drag it out like so. Okay, then I just take the brow, the tinted brow mascara and I focus on the out before going inside because I don't want a ton of product in that inner or like the front of my eyebrow. So as you can see, like it does add and then I spread it out and you can kind of shape them, make them fluffy or perfect or whatever you like for your face and your makeup. But like, I like a little fluffy. Like I said, it gives like a youthful look. And then with whatever's left, I kind of go towards the front like so. I don't know when this stopped recording, but basically I put on my brow mascara and what I do is I focus on the outside and then whatever's left on the little spoolie, I'll go back on the inside and I kind of shape them. I like the brow mascara because it gives a little bit more of a youthful look. And then if I get a little heavy handed, I'll just go back in with the spoolie and kind of like brush it out. It is mascara. So I'll curl my lashes. And I start at the end of my lashes at the tip and work my way back to the base. And then for mascara, I always use two. It could be two different kinds that I'm using, two of the same. Right now I have two of the same, and this is the Lash Paradise. They're waterproof, but I'll use one that is a little bit more dried up and then one that's a little bit more new. And I like this because the dried up one I'll do on my bottom lashes. You gotta be careful though, because dried up will uh, cause like a lot of flaking. I always try to keep my little spoolie, so if I get any mascara on the top of my lids, I'll let it dry for a few seconds and then just scrape it off. But I always try to focus at the base so it kind of gives a thicker look at the, like almost like I'm wearing more mascara eyeliner. So that's all I do. And then I'll take the dry, and this one's pretty dry, and I'll just run this along my bottom lashes. Okay, so I got dressed and I'm finally gonna put on my perfume and my lipstick. So for perfume, I'm wearing the Black Rose by Fifth, I think is how you say the brand name. This is like the best perfume. It's actually a, a perfume oil, which I do like because I feel like they last a lot longer. So I am putting it here, here, and then back here. Not too much because I'm getting on a plane and I don't want to like be wearing too much. And then for lipstick, kind of very same combo that I've been wearing for a long time. So Whirl. What's this one? Wherever Walnut by Makeup Forever, Whirl by MAC, and then my Charlotte Tilbury Kim KW. So I usually start with the Wherever Walnut and line my lips. You know what I need to get? I need to get a lipstick brush. And then, so I line them completely. Then I go in with my lipstick, which this is like a very, light nude i am so dehydrated so my skin doesn't look great my lips are a little bit not great but uh that's all right kind of add it on messy and then i go back in with the whirl by mac and kind of fill in and kind of soften the lipstick a little bit like so that's about all i do for my outfit I bet you could have guessed the skim shirt. I was thinking the other day, I was like, I seriously need to like 
really broaden my wardrobe, which I have been getting into some fun things, some different, like some patterns, colors, a little bit, like, like just a little bit for certain events and stuff. I feel like it's been working out really good. And then I'm wearing the Abercrombie trousers. I love these trousers. Actually, let me take you guys over to the mirror so I can show you my full outfit. So I'm wearing these Abercrombie trousers. I've worn these pretty much this whole trip, uh, which I'm breaking my airport outfit uh, attire. I mean, I had a I had an outfit that I wore on the on the plane, but these are just so comfortable and so flattering. And then just my black Chuck Taylors, which have also been like a new thing that I've got that I'm loving. And then my gold hoops. That is it. I am also gonna take my sweater. I just have like a gray zip up hoodie that I like to take on the plane. You know, I get cold on the plane. That's it. That is what I'm wearing today and pretty much what I wore this whole trip besides leggings. But trousers are so much more comfortable than leggings. Leggings sometimes, you know, if you're feeling a little bloated or like they're fine but trousers are flattering they're just they're really nice anyway if we do anything else exciting today i will take you guys along otherwise i'll see you at home i would say we were good together